Okay, I have a very simple repair for you guys today. It's not anything that's uncommon. I had the same problem happen on one of my other trucks about 15 years ago. But what happened on this guy, and I've been putting it off for a long time, it's been like this for a couple of months now. But what happened is the uh, intermittent wiper capability kind of went wigged out. It also got where it wouldn't turn off reliably. So last time I had this happen over a decade ago on the other truck, it was the circuit board that's inside the wiper motor here right under the hood. And so that is what I'm going to try on this one, hoping it's the same. So there's these three Torx screws that secure the cover. I'm getting two out and I got this one loose. And then I'm going to re remove the plug from the harness. So there's like a retainer piece here that comes off. And then just kind of prize this guy up. It comes off there. And now we can take the screw here off. Like I said, this is a Torx, and I believe, just reading it on here if I can, T T20. It's a T20. All right, and then I think that that's it. I don't think there's another. This guy just pops right off, and then this circuit board should just come right out. Just kind of wiggle it loose. Right. And what I did on the last time this happened on the other truck, and I'm going to try it on there, is that the solder contacts on this jack get uh, where they need to be retouched. And so that's what I'm going to do is see if it fixes this one as well. So let's go ahead and uh, take it over to work. So what I did right as I brought this in is I, I took an old toothbrush just to kind of get some of the dirt and crud that might be on the board and get all that broken up on the connections because all that can contribute to this so that I can then blow it off. I'm really not concerned about the lower half of the board that's been dipped in a protective chemical. You can kind of see that on the GM AC Delco type boards. It's kind of like a pinkish color. I'm only interested in the part that was exposed. So what I'm going to do is just go through. I'm not actually going to do any soldering itself. I'm just going to go touch the contacts on all of these. I'm going to start on this side. So like I said, I'm not going to do just the... Um, what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to go about three. 50 Celsius. I'm going to do the um, jack connector as well, but I also want to do um, this bridge connector just in case. And this one's kind of like a, a hard one to resolder because it acts like a heat sink, such a huge piece of metal here. I might have to go higher up on this one. Just take this current setting and do the jack connector itself. These guys are, yeah, there he goes, are um, going to soak a lot of heat. So 350 Celsius on the iron is probably the minimum to, to get it in there. But I want to get it nice and nice little puddle going so I know that it has re-adhered to both the printed circuit board as well as the connection itself. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And again, I'm just trying to get it to puddle up and heat the whole thing up and the pad as well. I don't want to hit that little plastic uh, piece right there so I'm just going to flip it come on this side let it heat back up again. Now on this one I'm really not happy with the amount of solder so I guess I lied. I am going to do a little bit of resoldering here. good connection on the pad. All right. Probably we'll do it this side as well. Maybe I can get as long as I got out of the other truck, which was a couple of decades worth. Now there's a little bit of this red that has spilt over to this. I'm going to go ahead and redo this anyway. My advice is not to breathe in the fumes of this red material. I'm sure it was back in the day when we didn't worry about things that were carcinogenic. I 
might get one more here. Move this guy up. Get a little bit of extra solder on him. I'm going to flip him again because I don't want to damage that little uh, alignment pin there made of plastic. All right, so this guy's done. Like I said, I'm going to redo these guys too. And then I'm going to go ahead, just, just to be sure, just while I'm in here, I'm just going to go ahead on all these other components. Just going to tin the iron a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and reflow the solder on all of these, just to be sure. All right, so that's really, that's really all this repair part is here, is reflowing the solder on the top half top half of this board that has not been dipped. And like I said, last time this did the, did the trick and I'm hoping it does the trick this time too. Alright, so I'm going to continue doing this and then we'll take it back over the truck, reinstall it and test it out. Put this back in. And you can see I've touched up and reflowed the solder on everything uh, ahead of the dip side. And I've gone in and brushed off and cleaned off and blown off with compressed air, uh, any dirt it's been around there and I also cleaned off these uh, contacts a little bit. I didn't remove everything because uh, part of that's normal. And I also very carefully uh, cleaned up the mating surface of here. I didn't get the compressed air because I didn't want to blow this dirt into the, the assemblies with this grease and everything, but I just wanted to clean it out as best I can. You know, mainly making sure that I've gotten these uh, mating points here and these two contact points here are cleaned off as well as the original thing we wanted to do. All right, so now we're going to slip it back in. And, and again, you now these grooves on the casing here and here is going to be where this plug connector slides in. You can get this guy back in like that. And he just sits like that. And then we will put the cover back on and we'll give it a try out. I see I missed a little bit of some crud on the bottom of this board, so I'm just going to kind of take it off my finger. And this goes back on the same way you took it off. There's no specific torque value on this, so my vice is just kind of snug it up. This guy in, he'll push the board in and, and seat him. And do the same thing with the one here at the top, and then the one on the lower bottom. And once I get all three of these in, then I'll reconnect the uh, harness connector and put the retaining blue retaining clip back in that keeps it attached. So while I tighten all this up, well actually, you know what, let me just go ahead, it's not that much longer. Now you know, you notice I didn't put any kind of a sealant around this cover, that's because there was no sealant originally from GM. This wiper made it 19 years without a problem. So you just get it all snugged up correctly and keep it clean, you won't need to put anything on there either. Okay, that's in, and then we'll put this guy back in the top. All right, let's go inside and give it a shot and see if it works. Here, I'm going to turn the wiper on here just to kind of lubricate things up. And I'm going to turn it on low. A little bit more here. Turn it off. All right, so I turn it off. Now I'm going to turn it intermittent. I've got it on the number two position. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds to make sure it does its thing. Now by this time, before I made this repair, um, this guy would just constantly go in low no matter what delay I used. I'm going to turn it on to the fourth delay, which is the fastest one. And we're going to wait a couple of seconds and then see if it's working. I'm going to go on the first one, which is the longest one. So I think this has once again repaired this. Looks like it's something that I'm going to have to do about every 20 years. It's kind of like when the cicadas are coming out or something. All right, it looks fixed. I hope this uh, helps you guys out too. It's a very simple repair. You know, of course, you could replace the whole board, but why do that if you can just grab a soldering iron and do this? 
Uh, please like and subscribe if this helps you out. Thanks for watching.